There are so many topics that we've covered here on Parenting Aging Parents. I feel like we've almost got a checklist, but it's not really that easy, is it? Not necessarily. And there's so many things that just begin conversations that are not just a one and done kind of conversation. Advanced care planning is definitely one of those. And today we are excited to be joined by Garrett Colwell, who helped found a nonprofit called kitchentableconversations.org. And it was really designed, Garrick, to facilitate these tough conversations. Yes, the idea is to be able to educate people on advanced care planning, end of life, what takes place as you approach your end of life, and also about what happens after death, which is, of course, grief and mourning. Yeah. So today we're going to we're going to focus on the advanced care planning. And, you know, it, it's not it, it's a it seems like a really daunting process and it's a big thing to cover and so important. Yeah, we have to understand that when we face our own mortality, which we're not geared to do and we don't typically talk about very often, but when we face our mortality to talk about advanced care planning, that oftentimes is very frightening and scary and, and people are uncomfortable with that conversation. And it's uncomfortable for, for us, the kids, if we're talking to our parents about it, partly because we're the kids and we're talking about death with our parents and partly just because asking those questions is sometimes difficult. It is. It is. And I think the thing that is most important is to understand that it is a process. It's not just getting a bunch of documents together and having them signed, mm -hmm. but it's understanding what it is truly what your loved one wants, yeah. what is, how they want their end of life to be uh, ministered to, how they want their end of life to be cared for. You know, what are the medical questions that need to be answered in order to ensure that they have a quality of life right up until their last breath? Mm -hmm. So how do you start those conversations? Let's I know that we could probably be here all day, yeah. but I mean, but just what are some hints for how do you start those conversations? Well, I think that you start the conversation with yourself as, as a, an adult who has cared for his parents, myself, is that I had to really find myself doing the advanced care planning for myself before I could actually sit down and have a conversation with my mom and dad. Hmm. And once I did, I felt comfortable that I knew what I wanted and then I could then bridge the gap between where I was and my understanding of it and where they might be. So hmm. a large part of this has to do with not just thinking that you're going to have a conversation that you want to have, but really understand where they are. So in other words, how do you meet them where they are? Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is just simply understand that they may be reluctant in which case you may approach it by saying, you know, mom, there's just something I've been working on for myself and I, I, will, I, I need your help. I wonder if you would, would mind sitting down with me and chatting with me about this hmm. and just engage them in a conversation, but really find out where they are in relationship to their understanding of what they might be considering or have thought about with regards to their end of life wishes and then build from there. Don't come into the conversation with an expectation that you're going to have them answer your questions come into the conversation with the intention of providing them a safe place in order to explore this most tender topic. Because it's more than just saying, hey, mom, hey, dad, I need you to sign this power of attorney. Can y'all do that? What are some of the good questions that need to be asked? What are the, some of the decisions that need to be made? A lot of it has to do, of course, on your medical situation, medical condition. And so first and foremost is making sure that if at all possible, mom and dad understand exactly where they are with their health. Mm -hmm. What is their trajectory of their illness if they have an illness? Uh, and if they do, what can be expected from um, where they're going, where, what's happening with them physically? Mm -hmm. So that may be sitting down and engaging a doctor and uh, with the doctor appointments with your parents and having a conversation with the doctor, making sure that your parents really understand what's going on. And then from there saying, if we know what's going to happen or have an idea, then let's plan for that as far as what you might want. In other words, do you feel that you would want CPR? Do you feel that you want to be intubated and be on a, um, a ventilator? Do you feel you want artificial nutrition? I mean, do you want everything done or do you want just to be made comfortable and have mm -hmm. you know, the kind of care that would allow you to be, like we hear from Barbara Bush in her last few days, she decided to have just simply comfort care, which is also known as palliative care. Mm -hmm. So those are choices that you sit down and have the conversation about. Are they difficult? They are. But the more we talk about it, the easier it is for that conversation to take place. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine, too, are, are some of the other pieces of that, too? Do you want to be at home? Do you want to be at, yes. you know, with some, you know, in hospice at a facility? You know, what are those those kinds yes. of things? And those are really tough decisions really to make, too. Mm -hmm. It's important to understand, too, that hospice isn't giving up. 
Hospice is about a, a type of care that is um, very supportive. I know that my, when my late wife went on to hospice, it was amazing how much additional support was offered and provided. I mean, you have an entire team of individuals that are focused on supporting you spiritually, physically, socially, emotionally. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these uh, different supports are available to you through hospice. Mm -hmm. And while you're on hospice, you do receive palliative care. And of course, that's the comfort care is so important to be able to manage what your symptoms are so that your quality of life until the end of your life is as best as it can be. Mm -hmm. So in those decisions of, do you really want to be at home? Do you want to be in a yeah. hospital? You know, where, where would you like to be? Yes. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, the ideas that you mentioned about how much care do you want or how much, yeah. how, you know, how much do you want heroic measures and those kinds right. of things as now, well. Do you want me to do, do you want us to do everything possible? Do you mm -hmm. want us to do, just make you comfortable? You know, these are some of the questions that you'll ask. And what we do is in uh, our classes is we basically walk people through what that process is step by step. Mm -hmm. I mean, advanced care planning is a process. There are three major steps in that process. The first is how to decide what it is that you want for your care. And then also how to decide and who to decide is going to speak for you if you can't speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. The second is be able to discuss. I mean, learning how to have the conversation with your loved ones and also learning how to have the conversation with your healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind your healthcare professional is a human being and perhaps just as afraid of mortality, their own death as, as you might be in your conversation with yourself. And the third, which is the last thing we actually do, is actually document that we actually create the advanced directives. Mm -hmm. Advanced directives wind up becoming a roadmap a roadmap that you, your loved ones, and your medical professionals can follow in order to ensure your wishes are honored and respected. Mm -hmm. And th these are classes that are coming up that are be that are free to attend. So tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, this is called the three Ds of advanced care planning, how to decide, discuss, and document your end of life wishes. And we have three webinars. They are 90 minutes each, and they take each one of the three Ds and break it down step by step so that you understand exactly how to decide, exactly what to say and, and who to talk to and how to go about uh, making those conversations take place. And that this, and also what documents you use, regardless of what state you, you're in, there are statutory documents that you can use that don't require an attorney. Uh, and in the state of Texas, that don't also re require that you'd have a notary public. They just require you to have two competent witnesses. <laughs> so the idea is that you, all this can be done in the comfort and the privacy of your own home and in the conversation with your loved ones. Um, and we also talk about how to document the, or how to distribute the documents once they're, where they're created, once your advanced directives are done. Mm -hmm. These take place in um, August on the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st, uh, Tuesday morning from 10.30 to 12. Um, and we'll be doing the series again in September as well as in November. Oh, that's great. So would this be something that you might would consider telling your parents that, hey, I'm going to be taking part in this and I'd really love for you to listen in too? Would that be maybe a way to start the conversation or do you think it's better for yeah. us to, 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 to learn and then bring our parents in? I'd love the question because I, I, there's a situation they had when you do these a week apart, there's homework, of course. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity for you on the first one. It's like what we talk about how to decide what you want, and then how to decide who your medical power of attorney is. So your homework is to talk to your medical power of attorney candidates. Now, you may have one or you may have multiple mm -hmm. before you decide who the person is going to be. But that's your job is to go out and, and talk to that person, if at all possible, and practice that conversation. And then when you come back to the second class, we debrief on how you did. If there's any challenges, we do some troubleshooting <clears throat> and in between the second and the third class. You're given an opportunity now to take that conversation when you learn how to discuss it with your doctor or more so importantly with your loved ones. Your homework is to go out and, and have a conversation with your loved ones about what your wishes are. So again, when you come back to the third class, we troubleshoot. We give uh, an opportunity for you to show us what your challenges were, how your conversations go. So the idea is that if you can bring your family together and have come to class, that's a wonderful way for you then to go through a three week period where you're all on the same page you're all having the same conversations and you're all learning. What's fascinating about this is that you learn so much about each other that uh, you didn't know before. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very opening and very intimate and very loving way of caring for one another. Yeah, the, the homework forces the conversation to happen. Mm -hmm. So the discussion is a lot easier mm -hmm. in some ways. Mm -hmm. It is. So, yeah. so, so what do I tell my mom? 
to, be mom. <laughs> to help um, her understand why I think it's important for, or any of our moms, but we'll, yeah. can you give me some language of what would I say yeah. to my mom to say, Hey mom, I think this would be a great thing for us to attend together. Yeah. I think it's just that the mom, I, I, I that's some exciting things that I'm doing for myself and, and for Mike. And I want to sit down and, and share that with you. would love to have you come with me. Um, and attend the class and just think, see what you think. There's no commitment. It's free. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity to listen in and, and maybe we can chat a little bit about it after uh, and see what you think. Mm -hmm. that, that's great. Yeah. I, hope that, I hope that lots of people are able to attend. We really appreciate your help and your guidance today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, for those of us who just want a checklist, right, and want to be able to say, you know, okay, you know, Tuesday at seven, mom, we're talking about this. Yeah, I think it's, it's not we, quite that easy. It's, but... Yeah, and it's and it's tough conversations. It's yeah. it's it's so personal and and it does make you face your mortality. Yeah, but so so important. And there are lots of topics that are important to you. If there's one that you want us to dive into and do interviews about, please let us know. All right.